Here are the topics that will be covered within the Supreme Court revision video. This video will compare the US Supreme Court to its UK counterpart. The meaning behind the creation of the UK and US Supreme Court was the same, although they were set up hundreds of years apart. Each was intended to provide an independent judiciary that was fully separate from the other two branches of government. The US Supreme Court was included in the Constitution as an integral part of the new republic and sat for the first time in 1790. The UK Supreme Court is a very young institution. Prior to its creation, the UK Law Lords had sat in the Appellate Committee of the House of Lords and were not physically independent from Parliament. The establishment of a new Supreme Court was part of a programmed move to modernise the judiciary and separate it from Parliament. I'm going to start the comparative element of the judiciary by comparing several areas of both Supreme Courts before focusing on the theoretical approaches. I'm going to start with the selection and appointment process of the justices and the characteristics of the justices, as well as the tenure and judicial approach. Let's start with the selection and appointment process. Both systems involve detailed scrutiny of potential candidates. However, there is a fundamental difference in the way that each justice is selected in both countries. US justices are political appointees who are appointed by the president and confirmed by the Senate. UK justices are selected by an independent selection commission before being presented to the Lord Chancellor, who is a government minister, for approval. The US appointment process is highly politicised, whereas the UK equivalent is independent and receives far less media attention. In fact, the position of a UK Supreme Court justice is advertised and candidates can apply as they would for any other job. An independent selection committee recommended one name to the Lord Chancellor, who asked the Prime Minister to recommend them to the Queen for a formal appointment. The Lord Chancellor can reject one name with good reason, or ask the committee to reconsider once, but then must confirm the appointment. Now let's look at the characteristics of the Justices. UK Justices must have been either a senior judge for at least two years, or a solicitor in one of the UK's highest courts, or a barrister for 15 years. In the US, there is no official requirement to be a Supreme Court Justice, but modern appointees always have significant legal or judicial experience. Women and ethnic minorities are underrepresented on both courts. The US Supreme Court has a higher proportion of women, but has never had a female Chief Justice, whereas the UK Supreme Court had a female President, Lady Hale, from 2017 to 2020. There are no Justices from ethnic minorities on the UK Court, but two on the US Court. Overall, the US court is more diverse and more representative. Now let's look at the tenure of the justices. Both UK and US justices enjoy security of tenure. They can only be removed during their term of office for wrongdoing, by impeachment in the US or via the judicial complaints procedure in the UK. There is an important difference in the length of tenure. UK justices must retire by the age of 70, unless they were appointed before 1995. UK, US justices have life tenure. And finally, there is judicial approach. Some US justices are mainly conservative and they practice judicial restraint. There is a similar approach in the UK where they follow precedent and defer to Parliament. However, some US justices believe that their role is to interpret the living constitution in a modern context. This loose constructionist can lead to judicial activism when justices make decisions to improve society. In the UK, justices have much more limited interpretative roles. Then we must compare the bases of power for both the Supreme Court as well as the extent of their powers. This section of the video will also look at the protection of rights and constitutional interpretation, starting with the base of their powers. Article 3 of the US Constitution establishes the US Supreme Court and gives it the judicial power of the United States. The court awarded itself the power of judicial review by striking down an act of Congress in Marbury v. Madison in 1803. The UK Supreme Court was created by an act of Parliament, the Constitutional Reform Act of 2005. The UK Supreme Court powers were therefore given to it by Parliament, although the two institutions are separate and independent. The UK Court of Power of Judicial Review is much more limited than that of the US, as it cannot rule acts of Parliament unconstitutional. The UK does not have a codified constitution. The UK Supreme Court also reviews, reviews legal precedent and decides how to apply it to the new cases. It considers parts of the British constitution that are written, such as the Human Rights Act of 1998, alongside constitutional conventions and common law. 
UK justices defer to Parliament's intentions when interpreting the law. In contrast, the US Supreme Court is concerned with the wording in a single document, the Constitution. This gives the US Court a stronger basis for its power, as it does not need to take the wishes of Congress into account. Let's look at the extent of both, the, both Supreme Court's powers. Both the US and UK courts are both final courts of appeal for those seeking justice. However, there are two areas in which the UK court has not acted as the final court of appeal. First, while the UK was part of the EU and during the transition period following its withdrawal, EU law superseded UK law. In cases relating to EU law, the European Court of Justice was the final court of appeal, not the UK Supreme Court. When the UK left the EU, all EU legislation that applied to the UK was transferred into UK law. This means that the UK Parliament now has the final say on UK law and the UK Supreme Court is the final court of appeal. The second is that the UK is a signatory to the European Convention on Human Rights, the ECHR, which is separate to the EU. The ECHR was signed in 1950 and commits its 47 signatories to abide by its articles of protecting human rights. People can seek justice for breaches of their human rights at the European Court of Human Rights in Strasbourg. The UK added the ECHR to its constitution as the Human Rights Act in 1998. This allows individuals to bring human rights court cases to UK courts. However, they still have the right to appeal to the European Court of Human Rights, so this is one area of law in which the Supreme Court is not the final court of appeal. Now let's look at judicial review. Judicial review is an important check on the power of the government and is used by both courts. Justices consider the legality of the government's actions and may find them unconstitutional in the US or rule them as ultra vers in the UK. US Supreme Court's power of judicial review is greater than that of the UK. In the US, acts of Congress are also subject to judicial review and can be struck down by the court. Now let's look at the protection of rights. Both Supreme Courts have an important difference in their ability to protect citizens' rights. The US Supreme Court can strike down laws that infringe the Bill of Rights, whereas the UK Supreme Court can only identify a law as being incompatible with the Human Rights Act of 1998 and invite Parliament to consider redrafting legislation. Crucially, Parliament can also ignore the UK Supreme Court's declaration of incompatibility if it wishes to. Unlike the Bill of Rights in the US, the HRA is not entrenched in the British Constitution, so Parliament could pass a new law to modify it or scrap it completely. Similarly, Parliament could withdraw the UK from the ECHR if it wanted to. This makes it possible for Parliament to pass laws that infringe on human rights, or for a majority government to pass retrospective legislation to legalise any breach of human rights. In the US, rights are entrenched in the Constitution, so they cannot be removed except by a constitutional amendment, although they can be reinterpreted by the Supreme Court. Finally, we have constitutional interpretation. The US Supreme Court has a much greater role in interpreting the Constitution than the UK counterpart. Langmark cases effectively change the meaning of the Constitution by acting as an interpretive amendment that can only be reversed by a constitutional amendment or a subsequent decision by the court. The UK Supreme Court cannot make sweeping interpretive changes to the Constitution, although it can clarify its meaning, as it did in both Miller cases, with regard to the limitations of the government's royal prerogative power. Next, we need to look at the relative independence of both the US and UK courts. This will cover judicial independence and judicial politicisation. Let's start with independence. An independent judiciary is essential for the rule of law. US and UK systems both encourage judicial independence, meaning that judges are free from any external pressure, improper influence or interference. This should allow them to make decisions based solely on the law and to hold even the most powerful members of government to account. In both systems, tenure ensures that the position of justices is protected from the government interference. The judiciaries are also structurally and physically independent from the other two branches of government. This independence allows the judiciaries to rule against the government as they see fit. For example, in the United States v. Texas in 2016, the court struck down Obama's executive order giving millions of illegal immigrants an indefinite delay in deportation. On the application of the public law, 
Project versus Lord Lord Chancellor in 2016 ruled that the Lord Chancellor was acting as ultra vers by imposing a residence test for legal aid. This is state support with legal costs. Politicisation describes a situation in which the judges are drawn into politics. This compromises their neutrality as guardians of the law. Politicisation can happen when judges make controversial judgments that are criticised by politicians or the media, or if they are motivated by their own political beliefs as opposed to a strict reading of the law. Politicisation can threaten judicial independence in the following ways, which I will break down. First, there is the politicisation of the courts. In the US, the ability of the president to appoint either a liberal or conservative justice means that the Supreme Court usually has a political leaning. A Republican president is likely to be challenged on fewer occasions by a conservative majority court than a liberal majority one. This situation does not apply to the UK as judges rule on a narrow basis of constitutional interpretation and their political views are not a focus of public interest in the same way. This is proven in the US with Bush v Gore in 2000. On the other hand, several pieces of evidence suggest that the politically appointed judges can act independently in the US. The president has no influence over the justices once they have been appointed as they have tenure. Justices may rule against the political interest of politicians who appointed them, such as Associate Justice Judges Neil Gorsh and Brett Kavanaugh did against Donald Trump in Trump v Vance in 2020. A second way that the judicial politicisation could maintain judicial independence is through political or public pressure. If judges make certain judgments to avoid ne negative publicity or criticism from key politicians, then they are not acting independently. It is impossible to know exactly what motivates justices to make the rulings that they do, but there has been an increase in hostile criticism of the judiciary in recent years. This change in political culture has been driven partly by social media. Political, political criticism of the UK judiciary has also evolved during the lifetime of the UK Supreme Court. Initially, it was mainly criticised for its interpretation of the Human Rights Act. The Brexit debate led to the judiciary being much more politicised. A key part of your Paper 2 exam will be to use structural, rational and cultural theory to compare and analyse the similarities and differences between the US and the UK Supreme Courts. Let's start with structural theory and how we can apply this to the two Supreme Courts. Structural theory is the role of the politicians and the institutions themselves. Let's start with similarities. Security of tenure allows justices to make independent judgments, while separation of powers gives the judiciary independence from the other two branches. Next, there are differences. Entrenched fundamental laws in the US Constitution have produced a more powerful judiciary than in the UK. The US court may use its interpretive powers for judicial activism if it wishes. Parliamentary sovereignty limits the power of the UK Supreme Court, as it cannot override Parliament. In contrast, the sovereignty of the US Constitution means that its Supreme Court can strike down laws passed by Congress. Appointing US justices is a political process which leads to more politicised and higher profile US just justices. UK justices are independently appointed and do not have an obvious conservative or liberal leaning. Rational theory is the role of individuals acting to advance their interests or personal preferences. Justices should take a rational approach to the law, analysing the merits of each case and making a logical judgement. If the meaning of the law is clear, then justices should reach a unanimous judgement, which they do on both courts in a significant proportion of cases. However, the meaning of the law is often difficult to determine, so justices make an individual judgement based on their personal analysis. This can result in divided judgments, with justices writing strong opinions and dissidents on both sides of the argument. Individual justices make decisions based on their own legal preferences and philosophy. In the US, the presence of a strongly liberal and conservative court means that ju judgments are frequently controversial and justices may be accused of judicial activism. UK justices generally follow a more restrained judicial approach. The judiciaries are often censored by individuals aiming to advance their own interest. This politicises the judiciary and puts justices under pressure. The leaders of both countries have also shown a willingness to reform the judiciaries to their own benefit. Trump appointed unprecedented numbers of appeal court judges, choosing more conservative candidates than previous Republican presidents.
Johnson appointed an attorney general, Suela Braverman, who argued that Parliament needed to take back control from the judiciary, which she felt was acting as a political decision maker and was supplanting Parliament. Cultural theory is the role of shared ideas and culture. Both cultures prize the rule of law and judicial independence. This tradition dates to the Magna Carta of 1215, which establishes the principle that no one can be imprisoned lawfully. The new US Republic inherited these values from its previous existence as the 13 British colonies. Both countries pride themselves on representing the best of Western liberal legal tradition, in which a strong judiciary holds the government to account and the rule of law applies. In recent years, populism was on the rise in the form of Trumpism in the US and the UK electorate's decision to leave the EU and then give Johnson a majority general election victory in 2019. Populists paint themselves as the true representatives of the people and have criticised the judiciary for supposedly thwarting the will of the people. This politicises judiciaries and may diminish public respect for their decisions. The US Supreme Court's definition of citizens' rights via key landmark judgments has generated bitter cultural battles between liberals and religious groups over issues such as abortion and same-sex marriage. The UK, the the UK Supreme Court has a lower public profile and its deference to Parliament means that its judgments are much less significant. This brings us to the end of our Supreme Court revision video. Here are some practice nine markers that you could have a go at. There are also some comparative and pure US politics questions as well as a comparative 25 marker on the screen as well. For the document 25 mark questions, see the exam pack that was given to you in September at the beginning of term.